In this video, I will be showing you how to solve expressions involving indices. So the most important part about solving expressions involving indices is being able to recognize the different laws of indices when you see an equation. And if you're struggling with simplifying these equations, then I highly recommend that you revise or go over the different laws of indices one more time. I went over them in my last video if you want to reference that. So anyways, let's get into this. Over here we have an expression, the under root of 16 times x to the power of 8 multiplied by y to the power of 6 multiplied by the under root of 2 times x to the power of 6 times y to the power of negative 5. Now simplifying an expression basically means that we want to be able to write it in as few letters and numbers as possible. So like this expression over here looks pretty ugly. We have like an under root, a bunch of powers, and a bunch of numbers. So we essentially just want this to look a bit cleaner. So I approach solving expressions involving indices by identifying the most obvious laws and then rewriting the question. So in this case, the most obvious law of indices that is in our face is the law of under roots, or any roots actually. So we know that taking the square root is essentially the same thing as taking a number to the power of 1 over 2. So we can rewrite this as 16 times x to the 8th times y to the 6th whole to the power of 1 over 2, multiply this by 2 times x to the 6th, multiply this by y to the power of minus 5, and this whole thing is taken to the power of 1 over 2 as well. Now writing out this whole entire thing over and over again may seem very tedious, but it's really important if we want to avoid making simple mistakes. So let's simplify this further. We know that this is essentially the same thing as saying 16 to the power of 1 over 2 multiplied by x to the 8th to the power of 1 over 2. So 16 to the power of 1 over 2 is the square root of 16, which is 4. Multiply this by x to the 8th to the power of 1 over 2. Multiply this by y to the 6th to the power of 1 over 2 times 2 to the power of 1 over 2 times x to the 6th to the power of to the power of 1 over 2 times y to the minus 5 to the power of 1 over 2. Let's write this out in a more simplified way. So this is 4 times x. So remember in the power law we multiply. So 8 times 1 over 2 is 4. So x to the power of 4. Multiply this by 6 times 1 over 2 is 3. So we get y to the power of 3. Multiply this by the square root of 2 multiplied by x to the power of 3 times y to the power of negative 5 over 2. So now what we want to do is we want to bunch like terms together. So for example, we take our normal numbers or numbers that aren't variables together, so 4 times the under root of 2. Then we take all of our variables involving x, so we or all of our expressions involving x, so we get x to the 4th right here and x to the third. And if you make a lot of simple mistakes when you're doing this, it might help you to try and cross out each term as you write it below so that you don't accidentally miss or add anything. Then we want to take our terms involving y, so y to the third times y to the power of minus 5 over 2. So we can cross these two out as well. Now what we get is 4 times under root 2 multiplied by this is x to the power of 7 using the addition law, or the law of when we multiply two indices together. And this times y to the power of 3 minus 5 over 2. 3 minus 5 over 2 is 6 over 2 minus 5 over 2 is equal to 1 over 2, which is the same thing as saying the square root. So x to the power of 7 times the square root of y. And this right here is our answer. As we can see, this looks much simpler or cleaner than what we had in the beginning. Okay, let's look at another example. Here we have x squared whole to the power of 3 multiplied by the square root of x to the power of 7 whole divided by x to the power of negative 1 over 3. Now once again, we want to just look for the rules that stick out to us at first. So over here we have the power rule can simply write this as x to the power of 2 times 3, multiply this by, here we know that square root is the same thing as writing 
to the power of 1 over 2. So we get x, x to the 7 times 1 over 2. The whole thing can be divided by x to the power of 1 over negative 1 over 3. Let's write this again. x to the power of 6 times x to the power of 7 over 2 times x to the power of 1 over 3. You see I just brought up this because of the negative power rule. So now all we need to do is add all these together. So we get x to the power of 6 plus 7 over 2 plus 1 over 3. So 6 plus 7 over 2 plus 1 over 3. Let's take a common base of 6. So we get 36 over 6 plus 21 over 2 plus 2 over 6. This is equal to what's our 6, sorry. 50, 57, 59 over 6, which is our final answer. So we get x to the power of 59 over 6.